Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're gonna do part three of the UFC uh, video series, which is advanced line of construction, which uh, kind of avoids the discussion of who the best plays are. That's become pretty clear over the course of the week. But we're just gonna really focus on how to build specifically for this uh, for this 150 max thing, um, because in MMA, in all sports, but MMA specifically, there's just an incredible difference between identifying the best plays and identifying how to how to play them um, in these types of contests where you have that battle between, you know, who rates to score the most points versus who rates to be played by that many other engines. Um, you don't want to be fighting so hard with the optimal to hit the optimal and then end up duping 25 other, other players. Um, so it's it's a constant battle. And we have a lot of tools to work with to try to strike that balance. So we like every week to kind of, you know, do this exercise to work with these tools to figure out good combinations of, of, of skill sets. Uh, I mean, I mean skill sets, I don't mean betting skill sets. I mean, lineup constructing skill sets to try to create a good portfolio of these, you know, of, of high upside lineups that, have a chance to win, but also do not rate to be duped that highly. Just a couple of notes on the card, though. And these are things that we do have to consider before we kind of get into this. Um, the junior top of Rodrigo de Lima um, situation, you know, uh, junior top, his brother was supposed to fight him. He dropped out. The junior top has stepped in. Net net looks to be very similar uh, with respect to the money line. Uh, and the inside the distance line and all that, maybe Rogero delineates a little bit of a bump, but that's all been factored into the projections here. And, I, and I'm sort of comfortable with the with the overall projections on this fight. Um, the other thing that's been kind of going around, and this is a little annoying, but this has been factored into the projections as well, is that Henry Cejudo might in fact be hurt. A um, couple of things about this. Number one, is that his line is totally steep, okay, uh, on a Marat to about minus 260 or something like that. And that at 8,600 plus his upside, I mean, I mean, he's going to be like easily the most popular play. Uh, that's not in the main event, I think. On the other hand, I only have him listed at 34%. And I think the reason why is because there's just other fights that are so good. You know, that main event is amazing. That that fight between um, uh, Ribeiro and uh, what's his name? Not not him, but uh, Ming Zhang just has an inside the distance line, which is incredible. Floppy Hernandez has incredible upside. So uh, that is something you have to consider. And again, this this injury business, it's tempting. It really is tempting to just X out Saluto. Um, I just never see these injured guys just do anything, especially in this matchup. But uh, for now, we're going to just go with the fact that projections are what they are. We're not going to give him a zero or anything like that. We're just going to kind of let this whole thing fly. Um, everything else is kind of clean. I think the projections are good. But I've already preloaded them into Saberson. Now, the first thing that we want to look at, again, is, well, we always want to look at how our lineups are being ranked. We ran a full 5,000 lineup set before I got on here um, with no other settings. And the first thing they always rank is they rank these by this MMA default setting, which is, as I discussed, just the most aggressive method of ranking lineups that there is. I mean, honestly, I mean, if you get deep into the weeds, you're, 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 you see this, this percent file 99, that's a multiplier. And that's, that's a really big deal to use that as the multiplier. Um, it's really just ignoring the median and just usually just using the ceiling of these, of these lineups. Um, and what that ends up getting you are just, like a bunch of lineups that don't make any sense to you if you're kind of like looking through the fights. But, you know, you do cap this situation where almost all of them, if not a good amount of them, are going to be unique. 
So uh, it's always a, a kind of a slate decision of how much you want to go with these types of, of, of rankings. And also you can use this type of ranking system to, you know, to get different when you limit your player pool. Like if you like reduce your player pool to say like only quote unquote the good plays, then you could do that and then re-rate everything by MMA default and get, you know, a decent, um, you know, kind of a decent ranking of, of lineups that kind of combine the quote unquote good plays with, you know, a decent chance to be unique. Um, so on this particular card, you know, you do have a 12 byte card. It's not 14 where you just basically can ignore uniqueness and you, you'll get to it organically. Um, and it's not a 10 fight card either where you have to just do all kinds of funny business to get to it. Um, it's 12 fights where you have to be sort of cognizant of it, but, but not go overly bananas, especially when you have so many fights here that can deliver. I mean, when I first looked at this, this card, I, I analyzed it as there being basically four fighters that you can X out and everybody else is in play. So when you have a situation like that, it's probably not necessary to get into this MMA default world, okay? With that said, I'm going to do it anyway, probably, just because, again, I, I, just, I just have seen too much chaos in MMA that you, you want to get some kind of exposure to this MMA default ranking. Um, maybe 20% of your lineups should be rated this way. Maybe 25, it depends, mm -hmm. you know, on what you feel. And um, so I did, I did get a bunch of lineups, maybe, you know, maybe 50 of them or something like that, maybe a little less that are rated by MMA default. Uh, and, and they're probably not going to win, but if they do win, they're going to be extremely competitive for the, um, excuse me, for a, the unique optimal. Let's put it that way. Okay. The, the, the next thing that we want to do is look at how all these things rate by, uh, by sim diversity, all right. So, so MMA sim diversity ten is Saber Sim's kind of like most solid version of high upside lineups. Okay, um, when you get into again the weeds with with what this means, it means you're you're not multiplying necessarily by ceiling, okay, but you're 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 multiplying by the sim optimals uh, plus 0.8 times the sum of my projections, which is fine. And then you dig it for average ownership, which is also fun. So this is good. This is good high upside. And depending on the slate size, it depend this may or may not be enough to get you the unique that you need to, you know, to be confident. In. If it was this were a 14 fight card, I would say you can almost go with this whole thing, just like that. If this were a 10 fight card, I would say absolutely not. Like this is this is hopeless. It's going to be way too duped. But in a 12 fight card, again, I think it's it's sort of a blend. So so I would go with this type of construction for um for a certain percentage of your lineups, whether it be you know 20% of them, 30% of them, things like that. You're not going to get like 100 percent uniqueness, not by a long shot, but you are going to certainly get um uh you know, a decent portfolio, let's put that. So what I like to do, by the way, is, well, first of all, let's go back to the MMA default for a second. Um, I do like to go to min uniques too, or even, well, let's, let's just say I was gonna build like say 50. I'm gonna actually know what I'm gonna do with this one. There's gonna be, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be do I'll do thirty, I'll do a good percentage from from MMA default. I'll do a good percentage from Sid University ten. I'm going to do a good percentage from, uh, from using the Sims, and then something that I like to do with my own takes. So let's just say for openers, let's put in, let's put in thirty three maybe from MMA default. And I like to do you know min uniques too. Uh, just to kind of keep, uh, uh, just to stay somewhat, you know, I was going to say, somewhat diversified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'll put these in the favorites. How about that? 
That'll be a good way to do this. That should us not put in the favorites. That should us do that. Put these in the favorites. And then we'll go back to some diversity 10. We'll put these in the favorites. Probably should put more than this. Um, yeah, no, let's, let's for now put 33 in the favorites. Oops. These in favorites. Let's make sure that these are being saved here. So it should be 66 in here. Yes. Okay. Um, next thing we are going to do is we are going to run the Sims. And it's important to know what settings we're going to use for the Sims. So again, there, there are two um, things that you consider, consider doing when you're trying to build your field of lineups that you're comparing your lineups to. One is you can use Saber Sim Ownership, which is certainly makes a lot of sense. You're comparing your lineups to what lineup Saber Sim believes are going to be created based on ownership. Um, but I think that the field is uh, kind of is sort of sharp. Well, I shouldn't say that. And that with what I'd like to do is take that 5,000 lineup set that we made right from the beginning and compare our lineups to that set. That to me has become my now my method of choice um, with respect to um, what field size I'm kind of comparing everything to. So let's let's save that and let's run a uh, a contest sim. where we're comparing our lineups to um, our 5,000 to ourselves, right? So now we are, we are you know, be prioritizing our lineups that are not, that are not over owned, so to speak. And they're, they're simming the results of these things given the payout structure. Um, so let's just see what we get. Don't really care too much what we get. I don't know why it's not. Let's see if I put 50 in here. I guess it is your 50. Um, so let's uh, sort these by the special, which is the lottery here. And we're getting something like this, which would certainly make some sense. And we might actually be getting some dupes from lineups that we've already played, but that's okay. Let's put um let's put 50 lineups that have been sent. Okay, into these into our lineup. So let's do that. Save the favorites. Boom. Now let's see how many total we have right now. We have 108. So we have 42 spots left for other stops. So we we we've sinned. We've done sim diversity 10. We've done uh, MMA default. What what I like to do next is really build a bunch of lineups with our actual takes. Okay, and I think it's helpful. Um, for at least a third of your lineups. So so let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is essentially X out our, um, the, just the guys that we hate. And then we're going to play the up, play everything else. All right, up to 40, I guess up to 42 lineups. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, um, and then we have to figure out how we're going to rank them. So we don't, we didn't like Carlos Vera. We didn't like Miranda. Well, we didn't like Miranda Maverick. Definitely X'd out Cejudo. Definitely X'd out Whitaker. Definitely X'd out Val. Uh, Copy off on back and forth with, we'll get back to that. Andrew Lee will X out. Uh, Jeff Neal uh, back and forth with, X, we'll X out Ian Gary. Uh, we've got to keep in Limoj and her opponent and Dern. Or Rob, we obviously should keep in all these other guys. I think we're keeping in um, Fernandez. Well, we're going to X out bulk for this one. Just because, again, I, ju I just have a good lean towards Deporia. And again, I think it's healthy. So let's just do that. Actually, let's not do that. Let's, let's keep bulk in for the purposes of this. Because we're going we're gonna to make them pretty... We're going to rank, rank it by MMA default anyway, I think. Um. 
So the question is going to be whether we use all these guys like Costa. And I don't think that the problem with the Costa plays, I don't think that Whitaker is going to be high enough owned to make it work. Kapilov definitely is going to be high owned. Um, excuse me, Hernandez is definitely going to be high owned. So we want to use Kapilov. Quinlan, uh, you should probably use him. Neil, again, what did I say? He's that's the thing. Whitaker is not going to be the highly owned, so you really can't use Neil for the purposes of this. But all of these others, where's Lee Mosh? Where did she go? Is she in here somewhere? Yeah, Lee Mosh is in here. So all these guys I like. Tafa, do I want to play Tafa? He may as well because he's going to have good leverage. So here. We're going to just use these guys and we're going to build 42 lineups, but we want to rank these by probably by MMA default because otherwise these are going to be like way too popular. Okay. Um, uh, we got to get rid of some of these. So whatever. we're going to just rerun these lineups here. How about that? We're going to rerun these with just these fighters and we're not going to build that many. We'll build... You know, we'll build 50, 500, and we'll rebuild these. These are, just, remember, this is only playing like the guys or the girls, whatever, that we quote unquote like. And again, I think I think it's healthy to, to do some of this, you know. As long as you rate them in a way that you're not just triple duping, which, which could be using MMA defaults. It could be uh, using GeoMe filtering. That's possible too. Could be restricting salary. And that's possible too. And let's just see. Let's just see what we get. Now, the most important thing to note, not the most important thing, is that I haven't really checked to see who I have. And I know you're not going to want to hear this, but I think that's fine. You know, you get you get too bogged down with what you want instead of trusting your models and show, telling you kind of what you need. I'm already doing this, you know, with these takes. So let's let's see what this is. Okay, so MMA default, we're gonna rank them this way. Let's say we played 42 lineups. Can we is this even gonna work? Um, let's see. 42 lineups. We'll put these in our favorites. And I still think we're going to probably have dupes. I don't think we're going to end up with 150 yet. Let's just see. Uh, well, I do have 150. So this worked out perfectly, actually. So this is probably a good combination of what I want to do here. You know, it has a good combination of, of lineups that have been, you know, that, that we've run versus the Sims. We've had some Sim diversity stuff. We've had some by sorting by MMA default. And then we did that little thing at the end where we just kind of ran our takes. Um, the only thing we didn't do is use Sims based on Saber Sim ownership. But again, I think for this particular card, I think it's better to do it this way because again, I'm confident in the projections. I'm confident this is what the field lineups are going to look like. So uh, I think this is a pretty good way to go. And again, just you eyeball these, you know, there's always going to be some comfortable, uncomfortable exposure here. Not to mention the fact that I'm going to have, I'm going to have very little Volkanovsky. Uh, I'm going to have under the field on Sicoria, under the field on Fluffy, actually. I mean, I'm going to have a whole bunch of Marab, which is a little scary, actually, if you want to know the truth. But, um, but I'm kind of I'm kind of content with this. And that's uh, and that's probably going to do it for today. I mean, again, all I want to do is just show you a couple of little tricks and a couple of little things to work with Saberson to build your 150. Um, and there's other things you could do. We'll get to them in other videos and things like that as far as saving salary. Problem with saving salary again is that I don't there, there's if you like an underdog, like that's really good, you could save salary really efficiently by just leaving that amount of money on the table that separates him from the favorite with the idea that the favorite is going to just be, you know, the optimizer is going to grind to that result. Um, like if you really like Taporia, for example, you, you leave 200 on the table and and, and uh, this way the optimizer plays will probably get the, get you know most of the field to Volkanovski. So you get a little more 
uniqueness there. But aside from that, um, today, uh, I don't think you need to do stuff like that. Anyway, uh, that should do it. Uh, and uh, I will see you guys next week.